the working class and the employing class have nothing in common there can be no peace so long as hunger and want are found among millions of working people and the few who make up the employing class have all the good things in life between these two classes a struggle must go on until the workers of the world organize as a class take possession of the earth and the machinery of production and abolish the wage system we find that the centering of management of the industries into fewer and fewer hands makes the trade unions unable to cope with the ever-growing power of the employing class the trade unions foster a state of affairs which allows one set of workers to be pitted against another set of workers in the same industry thereby helping defeat one another in wage wars moreover the trade unions aid the employing class to mislead the workers into the belief that the working class have interests in common with the employers these conditions can be changed and the interests of the working class upheld only by an organization formed in such a way that all its members in any one industry or in all industries if necessary cease work whenever a strike or lockout is on in any department thereof thus making an injury to one an injury to all instead of the conservative motto a fair day's wage for a fair day's work we must inscribe on our banner the revolutionary watchword abolition of the wage system it is the historic mission of the working class to do away with capitalism the army of production must be organized not only for the everyday struggle with capitalists but also to carry on production when capitalism shall have been overthrown by organizing industrially we are forming the structure of the new society within the shell of the old